If you were to ask any director for film or TV, you'd likely hear them at least once mention of how the project didn't exactly turn out like originally intended. Whether health, actors, money, hell, even catering can mean that scenes are altered or have to be dropped. And by the time they've been edited, had studios meddle with them, films can end up being totally unrecognisable when compared to the original script. However, there are some scenes that you just do not mess with. Moments when directors will put their heels to the floor and dig in deep or set that were just thrown in on a whim last minute and ended up being utterly brilliant. These are just such scenes. I'm Jules WhatCulture.com and these are 10 awesome movie scenes that almost didn't happen. Hey, just quickly to pop in before the list actually starts, I just want to talk to you about That Film Theory. If you don't know what that is yet, it's a brand new channel that's going to be about video essays, cinematic experiences, a bit more relaxed approach. Hopefully we'll see you there. You can find the details down below. Number 10. Pool Cleans Up. Deadpool 2. Ever since X-Men Origins Wolverine was released, Ryan Reynolds has had something hanging over his head. In his eagerness to bring Deadpool to the screen, the actor became part of one of the worst mistreatments of any comic book movie character ever. For those not in the know, the merc with the mouth had his mouth sewn up and was pretty much a bastardization of the beloved figure. In Deadpool 2, though, he fixed that problem, using the finale's time travel montage to go back and do some housekeeping, including actually stopping Ryan Reynolds from signing on to the Green Lantern and killing off the Origins version of Wade Wilson. It's legitimately one of the greatest meta comic book moments ever, and it almost didn't happen. It turns out that when using the footage from Origins, it was actually quite a ball ache, as Reynolds himself later revealed. We had a dick of a time trying to get the actual raw footage through from X-Men Origins Wolverine. The movie was shot on film, it wasn't shot on digital, so it was harder to get. We were sitting there on the Fox lot, the exact piece of movie that we needed had been damaged on whatever the transfer was, so we had to go to some backup which was in some vault somewhere in the middle of the country, the United States, and we ended up finally, at the last second, in putting it into the movie. And to be honest, it was one of the biggest crowd-popping moments in that film, so while it was a pain, it was definitely well worth it. Number 9. Darth Vader's Massacre – Rogue One Say what you will about the infamous Rogue One reshoots, but in my opinion at least, they definitely improved the movie. Sure, it did mean that a lot of footage from the marketing campaign didn't actually make it into the movie, but it did give us this. The ending moments to Rogue One are utterly enthralling. And yes, they are a bit fan-baiting, but it shows off what Vader is truly capable of. It almost becomes like a horror film, with the anticipation building to fever pitch before Vader finally appears and cuts down rebel soldiers as if they were bits of wet bread. And we have to remember that it's likely that the Rebellion has only ever heard of Vader in myths and legend, but here he is in the slightly charred flesh. He goes from 1 to 11 in a matter of seconds and cements his reputation perfectly, which makes it even weirder to think that this was one of the last scenes to be added into the film through the reshoots and was so close to never happening at all. Number 8. Bohemian Rhapsody – Wayne's World as Mike Myers revealed recently on Stephen Colbert's show while talking about the Bohemian Rhapsody release that was upcoming at the time, the iconic headbanging scene in Wayne's World was almost completely different. The original script called for Wayne to play Guns N' Roses Welcome to the Jungle, but Myers put his foot down. Despite having basically no pulling power at the time and zero track record as a film star, Myers insisted that either Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody was to be played or he would walk away from the film entirely. He'd grown up listening to the song and it meant a lot more to him, hence his willingness to go to bat for it. Stunningly, he got his own way, and one of the most famous musical scenes of all time was then committed to film. Number 7. Loki's Shapeshifting – Thor The Dark World Look, no one here is going to try and tell you that Thor The Dark World is a great film. However, even as one of the weaker Marvel flicks, it still contains some really good moments. Chief amongst the best parts of the film were pretty much every scene in which Tom Hiddleston's Loki is involved with. Even as the rest of the film sags, his performance shines, and he's just about the only character who emerged with his reputation actually improved. That's probably why Thor Ragnarok bothered to acknowledge the movie at all in its Odin subplot. Oddly, though, one of the best Loki scenes in which he shapeshifts to annoy Thor wasn't in the film at all initially until a very, very, very late edition, according to director Alan Taylor. Number 6. Spaghetti Romance – Lady and the Tramp 
Now, infamously, P.L. Travers almost stopped Walt Disney from including the animated sequences and the musical numbers in Mary Poppins, but the great man convinced her to relent and a classic was born. What is less well known is the fact that Uncle Walt was sometimes on the other side of bringing fun to the table. The spaghetti date scene from Lady and the Tramp is without doubt the most famous moment in the 1955 Disney animation, but Walt Disney himself thought that the whole idea was a bit far-fetched and initially cut it from the film's first storyboards. Walt wasn't convinced that there would be a very clean-cut scene, former Disney archivist Stephen Fagini told Yahoo Movies. As you can imagine, if you have two pets then they eat a plate of spaghetti, it's hard to envision that being too graceful. Eventually though, he relented, and we have a dinner scene more tender and romantic than even when me and your mum pop out for a nibble, a glass of wine, and a chat about the economy. There's my one per list. What? Well, I never said that they'd all be dirty ones, did I? Number 5. The Head. Jaws. Jaws is basically the archetypal example of how not to make a movie. Beset by production issues and the naivety of the filmmaker, the shoot remarkably overran by more than 100 days, and in between the nearly always broken shark model and unreliable sea conditions, it's a wonder that it was made at all. In many respects, it should have sunk to the floor like a boat with a bottom cut out from it, which actually was the exact scene that almost didn't make it into the film. I'm speaking, of course, of one of the best jump scares not just in this film, but arguably in all of cinema. Cinema, the head of Ben Gardner popping out from the wreckage. Unthinkably, this moment wasn't even in the vision that was screened to test audiences, and the lack of reactions made Spielberg go back and add it in. So you can thank those unfazed guinea pigs for you having to change your underwear when you first watched it. Excellent. Number 4. Schwarmer, The Avengers not every great scene needs to be entirely transformative to a film's plot. Some of the most memorable and most talked about can be throwaway moments that just add something to the mythology of the characters, which is very much the case with the hastily added mid credit scenes that came with the Avengers. Initially, the film's only post credit content was going to reveal Thanos, but Joss Whedon decided that wasn't enough and decided to build in a punchline to Tony Stark's mention of Shawarma earlier in the film. Remarkably, he somehow managed to get Marvel to agree to shoot the scene two days after after the world premiere, which has to be the latest reshoot ever on record. In the process, Marvel beat Warner Bros. to the punch by several years in the race to deal with an actor returning for reshoots with non-removable facial hair. They simply slapped a big rubber chin on Chris Evans, who had actually grown a beard for Snowpiercer, and made him cover it with his hand. It's kind of brilliant if you ask me. Number 3. Damien's Smile – The Omen Richard Donner knows a thing or two about alternate cuts of movies, having been involved in one of the most notorious of all time in Superman 2. But it wasn't the only time his vision didn't quite sit with the way the film was originally intended to be released. It also happened when he made The Omen. Originally, the film was set to end with Damien and his entire adopted family dead, suggesting that somehow the actual devil could be killed, which sort of spoils the whole mythology of the character, but it would have also spoiled any chance of any potentially lucrative sequels. Donna decided that that just couldn't happen, and turned to the studio to change things, which they greenlit to allow Donna to preserve Damien to terrorise more victims another day. And in the process, we ended up with the haunting shot of the devil spawn himself turning to the camera and smiling. No thank you, please. Number 2. The Death Fake Out – Fatal Attraction Michael Myers and Halloween might have basically invented the he's not really dead fake out that all horror movies now seem to use as a staple, but there's never been a final example of the trope than in Fatal Attraction. Now, ultimately, Karma doesn't get Douglas at the end of the film, even though it probably should on the balance of things, and instead he's given a way too forgiving wife and they together kill Glenn Close, but it takes both of them because somehow she survives a vigorous drowning, only to then be shot at the last minute by Douglas's wife. It's a memorable scene that seemed to make Close's character almost supernatural, but it almost didn't even make the film as the original ending had her grimly slitting her throat to implicate Douglas, who was then arrested. Talk about your downer endings. Unfortunately for everyone who rightly believed he deserved it, test audiences didn't think much of it and we ended up with the classic ending all the same. And number one, The Bike Flight, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The history of E.T. movies could have been vastly different to what we actually got thanks to the still mind-boggling suggestion that there was almost a sequel that would be in a horror movie called Night Skies that would have smushed the original's more light-hearted spirit into the mud. In reality, the original E.T. was almost a lot less uplifting than it became and we have test audiences to thank for that change in tone. 
Initially, Spielberg's version ended on a downer note of E.T. being killed off, which predictably didn't go down well with the test audiences, because obviously nobody likes seeing characters they've just fallen in love with being horribly murdered by the government, even if they do look like a scrotum. The reactions changed the film, and we ended up getting to see E.T. escape the government stooges, including the now iconic bike in front of the moonshot that is now pretty much the defining image of Spielberg's career. And to think, it was basically an afterthought.